So now let's skip ahead here and, and cover some of those doctrinal issues because lots of times they tell us that, uh, oh, the Bible versions don't affect doctrine. Well, Will has uh, gathered up many, somewhere around 20, 20 just to start with. Yeah, 20 examples at least, yeah. At least. And uh, they're on his website. <clears throat> well, well, what is your website? Yeah, it's pretty easy to find. It's uh, another King James Bible believer. So just Google search and just another King James Bible believer. And that should bring you up to my site. Now, you're, you're right about the textual issue. That's part of it. Like, for example, uh, where I part of what got me convinced is that uh, what you'll see in, like, say, versions like the ESV, which is really popular right now, is that it'll omit about 3,000 words from the New Testament. And that's about 15 verses that have just gone, plus all these other phrases. And so you get about 3,000 words. But you go into the Old Testament and you find that uh, they reject a lot of the Hebrew readings, uh, the numbers and names, and they'll they'll follow, say, the Greek Septuagint. And then they add literally hundreds of words to the Old Testament uh, from this Greek Septuagint version. So that's part of it. You know, textually, did, did God say this or did he not say it? But then you get into, I hear the argument a lot, well, all the Bible versions have the same doctrine. No doctrines are changed. And that simply is not true. And uh, they're not textual issues. They're not variant readings. Most of the doctrinal issues are actually translational issues. And um, give, us an, give us a good example. Yeah, there are several examples. Um, <clears throat> one of them was that I mentioned before is that can God be deceived? And uh, you'll find that the New American Standard teaches that he, he was deceived by the children of Israel. It's interesting that you said that was one of the things that uh, caused you to reject yeah. the um, uh, NASB. Yeah, once I start seeing, you know, errors, at least theological errors or something, I say, wait a minute, that can't be right. And so I would put that aside and then I'd begin examining the others. You know, you don't even have to be uh, a theologian to think, can, can a man deceive God? Really? I mean, you don't, gotta, you, don't even, you don't have to go to Bible school. Uh, you don't have to know Hebrew or Greek. All you have to know is, can a man deceive God? According to the scholars, and they used to say, I, mean, I remember in, we would, um, at our, my old church, they would say, uh, I remember teachers saying, well, that's, that's the Bible for serious uh, Bible study, the New American Standard. Yeah. Let's see, I'm going to be serious, and I'm going to find out that men deceive God. It doesn't sound too serious to me. Yeah, the New American Standard is basically dead in the water right now. Well, that's, that's true, too. It's not the, anybody's standard, and it's on life support. Yeah, it really is. Uh, somebody jokingly said that the only way they could revive the New American Standard is to come out with a swimsuit edition. <laughs> that's a good one. Yeah. But, I mean, it's going the way of the old ASV, you know, its predecessor. Exactly.